Hi and welcome. In this message, I would like us to look at the story often known as the woman at the well. Uh, It's the story of the lady from Samaria and uh, Jesus' impact on her life and the life of uh, the entire village. There will be three groups of people that I will be looking at in this uh, message today, but we'll come to that in a moment. So we will be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, beginning at verse 4. Let's read together. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it himself? as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go tell your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is Spirit and his worshippers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want, or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have bought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it's still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, 
many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the saviour of the world. What an amazing story. Here we have a woman who has been totally ostracised by her community. She was gathering water in the middle of the day on her own. This normally would have been a community practice with many women coming to gather water at the beginning of the day for ablutions and for cooking. But here she is in the middle of the day on her own. Such a divine appointment with the Son of God there at Jacob's well. Jesus spoke to her from the position of knowledge, spoke to her of Jacob's well, spoke to her of their history, and spoke to her from his heart. He showed truths to her. He opened her eyes through his words to the reality and the truth of who he was. He spoke with her intentionally. She then went back to the community that had ostracised her, but she went back a changed woman. The whole village then came out to see Jesus. Now the thing that strikes me here is that within a very short period of time, she went from being totally ostracised to a woman of great influence. Something dramatic must have happened to her for this village to take notice of what was going on. And so the whole village then came out to find out what had so dramatically changed this woman. Changed her before their very eyes. Because the disciples had gone into town to buy some food. It doesn't say it was that town, but chances are it was. They had gone into town to buy some food for themselves and for Jesus. They would have been seen as strangers in the town and possibly even been recognised as Jews. Although the scripture doesn't talk of that, they then came back to see Jesus talking with the woman. Scripture says that they didn't ask any questions why there was, this was happening. All they wanted was lunch. And they said to Jesus, how about some food? And Jesus said, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't need the food that you have. And the great comment from the disciples was, where did he get his lunch from? Somebody else must have brought him food. But I'll come back to that in a moment. Now this happened in a very short space of time. The woman had then gone back into town, had impacted the village in some dramatic way and was now back at the well with the whole village in tow and the disciples and Jesus were still there. In fact, the village was so impacted by meeting with Jesus face to face, so impacted by the change that had happened in this woman that they obviously wanted to discover for themselves, that they pleaded with Jesus to stay with them. And we read that many did believe. One comment that uh, I wish to make uh, regarding how Jesus uh, interacted with the disciples in the time that the Samaritan woman was back in the village, obviously witnessing to them. Jesus pointed out to them that they had missed the moment. They had missed the opportunity that was right before them. Because the scripture says uh, that Jesus said to them, you have a saying that in four months it'll be the harvest. But I say to you, the harvest is here now. What he's saying to them is, don't worry about the day-to-day -day stuff and miss the important. So let us now look at the three groups of people that are mentioned in this story and contemplate 
which group we may associate ourselves with. This isn't a test, there's no winners or losers. I am simply asking us to ponder where we might connect. Could we be the woman? Someone who has felt left out, someone who feels that maybe they're walking on their own, someone who maybe feels that their mistakes, their lifestyle, their past is so great that they are alone, they are on their own. They, like her, have been ostracized from the normal day-to-day goings-on of life. Jesus met her at her point of need and and desires to meet you at your point of need. That's why you're watching this message today. So maybe you identify with the woman. Or Jesus is here to meet you at your point of need. Maybe you identify as one of the people in the village who have heard the story of Jesus but now wish to discover Jesus for yourself. Well, he is here today to meet with you. Maybe you have been walking with Jesus for a long period of time but you feel that you have become complacent or maybe you don't witness as you used to or as you may wish to. Well, Jesus is here for you as well, to send you back out, to encourage you and to revive you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you have gathered us for this message. Lord, that you met that Samaritan woman at her point of need. There was no condemnation from you, but there was challenge for her to examine her life. Help each of us do that this day. I thank you, Lord, that you had arranged things in such a way that you could meet the whole village. And that through that encounter, many people came to faith. And I thank you, Lord, that you also meet us, who have walked with you for some time, to re-engage with us, to encourage us, and to bring us back to yourself, to remind us that we have a story to share and that the harvest is all around us. Speak with us again through this message and fire up our hearts for the good news that is only found through you. So friends, thank you for watching this message. Thank you for being willing to open your heart to what Jesus is saying to you. And may his blessing and his favour be on you and your household this day and forever. Amen.